Tom Fenton, you are the President of Judicial Watch. You are hereby recognized for five minutes. If you will hit the red button. Talk button. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Maddows, and thank you, uh, Mr. Connolly, for conducting this hearing. Uh, Judicial Watch is a conservative, nonpartisan educational foundation dedicated to promoting transparency, accountability, and integrity in government politics and the law. Uh, without a doubt, we are the most active Freedom of Information Act requester and litigator in the nation today. And it is no secret that Judicial Watch has had uh, concerns over the years about the Clinton's ethics and respect for the rule of law. So it was with some skepticism we greeted promises by Hillary Clinton in 2008 and 2009 uh, to conduct herself accordingly or appropriately with respect to the Foundation as a condition of her being approved as Secretary of State with some skepticism. At the time, even CNN reported that Bill Clinton's complicated business interests could present future conflicts of interest that result in unneeded headaches for the incoming Commander-in-Chief. And to reassure President Obama, and Senators from both parties, uh, Mrs. Clinton uh, agreed to uh, part not participate personally and substantially in any particular matter involving specific parties in which the William Clinton Foundation is a party or represents a party. And additionally, the Clintons promised that the President's speeches and business activities would undergo a State Department ethics review and that the Clinton Foundation would disclose its donors online and agree to significant restrictions on support from foreign governments neither of which, to be fair, it wasn't required by law, but was contingent on her being confirmed by the Senate. Uh, we obviously had zero confidence that these promises would be kept, and we began monitoring the ethics process and filed a Freedom of Information Act request in 2011 to see how that ethics process was being implemented. Uh, we were ignored for two years by the administration. We sued in 2013 and found something which ter wasn't terribly surprising to us, but still shocking, that former President Clinton gave 215 speeches and earned $48 million while his wife presided over U.S. foreign policy. Uh, not one of those speeches was uh, deemed a conflict of interest. They cons that also included a consultancy with the controversial Clinton Foundation advisor Doug Band, uh, the cult with, who ran something called the Teneo Group. Uh, that consultancy ended after Teneo was caught up in a failed investment firm known as MF Global. State Department legal advisors approved Bill Clinton's speeches in China, in Russia, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, uh, the UAE, Panama, Turkey, Taiwan, India, the Cayman Islands, and other countries. Uh, the speeches, uh, the approvals were routinely copied to Cheryl Mills, Hillary Clinton's senior counsel and chief of staff, who had been a foundation official, had negotiated the ethics agreement, which raised, again, conflicts of interest issues as to why she was involved in this process at all. Uh, the, uh, Documents also show that Mr. Clinton received a staggering sums from Saudi benefactors, specifically 18, between $18 million and $50 million were raised from the Saudis uh, during this time period. While Mrs. Clinton served as Secretary of State, Bill Clinton gave two speeches in Saudi Arabia, earning a total of $600,000. Uh, he spoke at the Global Business Forum in Riyadh, founded by the Saudi Investment Authority and sponsored by uh, the, the, the Bog Group, a commercial colossus with close ties to the Saudi family. He received $300,000 for that speech. Uh, there was one deal that was turned aside, uh, but the exception in many ways proves the rule uh, that this ethics process was no more than a rubber stamp to allow Bill Clinton to raise money from foreign corporations, mostly controlled or too often controlled by foreign governments. Uh, specifically, also, uh, the documents show that he was approved to speak to something called Renaissance Capital, which is a Russian government-linked firm that, uh, turns out, later uh, was connected to the Uranium One issue. Again, approved without, uh, without comment by the so-called ethics process on the, on, in the State Department. And then we found the Clinton email server, Judicial Watch litigation. Uh, to sum up, found the Clinton email server. Our Freedom of Information Act requests and lawsuits forced the State Department to admit they had all these emails they weren't telling anyone about. And also, who, another employee of the State Department who was participating in this server was Yuma Abedin, who, uh, according to testimony she gave the Judicial Watch, needed it to conduct the Clinton's personal and family business. And to be sure, documents that we uncovered later 
as a result of uncovering the Clinton email server, uh, show the Clinton Foundation was in regular contact with Aberdeen and others in the State Department uh, to get special favors and treatment for supporters and allies of the Foundation. Specifically, for instance, Gilbert uh, Shigori, who was, uh, was, a, was asked to be put in touch with the State Department's substance person on Lebanon. This was by Doug Ban, the Clinton Foundation official. Ban notes that Shigori is a key guy there, Lebanon, and to us, and insists that Aberdeen call Ambassador Jeffrey Feltman to connect them to Shigori. Uh, Shigori is a close friend of President Clinton, a top donor to the Foundation. He appears near the top of the Foundation's donors list, gave between one and five million dollars to uh, the Foundation and pledged a billion dollars to the Clinton Global Initiative. I don't know if he actually spent the money. He was convicted in 2000 in Switzerland on money laundering. So you can see that the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton State Department almost immediately broke promises to President Obama and the Senate to maintain a wall of separation between the Foundation and the State. We have numerous instances, it's detailed in my written testimony, of uh, pay-to-play and favoritism for Clinton Foundation supporters with the Clinton State Department. Uh, it's so bad that the Crown Prince of Bahrain couldn't get a meeting directly with Mrs. Clinton through the State Department, so he went through the Clinton Foundation to try to get the meeting. Uh, many have noted that uh, it was hard to tell where the Clinton uh, State Department ended and where the Clinton Foundation began, and this was in response to these disclosures, again, not of insider documents, but government documents that have been hidden from the American people. Uh, then there's the Uranium One controversy, and specifically uh, it was a controversial 2010 Uranium One deal. Uh, there were monies that were funneled into the Clinton Foundation by Uranium One interests, specifically uh, uh, Mr. Frank Giestra, and these monies um, result were hidden were hidden from the American people. Uh, the Foundation promised to disclose these monies in, as I said, this earlier agreement, uh, $31.3 .3 million dollars was uh, given to, for instance, the Foundation uh, beginning in January 2008, or around the year 2008. We have uh, the new documents, of the document of the Renaissance Capital, $500,000, which is just the tip of the iceberg. And since then, both the New York Times has reported uh, that Uranium One's chairman used his family's foundation to uh, make four donations totaling $2.35 million uh, to the Clinton operation. And of course, as, as I said, this, none of this was disclosed. And shortly after the Russians announced their intention to acquire the stake in Uranium One, uh, Mr. Clinton received that $500,000 speaking fee from the Renaissance Capital Organization. So we're asking for documents for Uranium One. We're getting the proverbial hand to the face from the administration on this. It's unfortunate that even the Trump administration uh, doesn't want to divulge the full truth about this. Uh, but there is enough evidence uh, to warrant serious investigations of the Clinton Foundation. And there is evidence that, uh, in addition to this, that the Clinton Foundation investigations that may have been taking place during the Obama administration were suppressed by the Justice Department. So frankly, it's no surprise the Justice Department isn't here today.